Today we'll be talking a little bit about evading tracking dogs. Now these are not things that I'm telling you about to help you if you have any criminal intent. The reason I'm discussing this is for those of you who wish to have the knowledge for the future in any foreseeable event by which you need to legitimately protect yourself by escaping from being tracked by a canine, which is not a simple task, and the subject of which is mired in urban myths, which I will address in this discussion because unfortunately many people believe these myths, which is evident in the fact that there are prepping videos that flout these myths as facts. And focusing on the most common myths is where we will start. Myth number one, you can escape from tracking dogs by wading through water. This is not true. In fact, it will make it even easier for the dog to track you. The reason for this is that the dog is not actually following your scent per se. The dog is picking up on the distinct odor coming from the dead skin cells that are left behind everywhere that you go. Yes, believe it or not, that's how sensitive their olfactory glands are. So if you wade through water, then wherever you come out, those skin cells will be left behind where the water drips off of your body. And those spots will actually amplify the odor for the dog because the cells will be in higher concentrations on those spots, making the trail a little easier to follow. Anyone who ever evaded dogs this way went so far upstream that the handler just didn't want to bother. Myth number two, pepper and other types of spices and pepper sprays that are left on your trail will make the dog lose the scent or cause them to be in so much pain that they will not want to continue. This is a myth that is widely believed partially due to the film Cool Hand Luke. And just like the film, this is fiction. Putting spices on the ground or even pepper spray on the ground may distract the dogs or make things uncomfortable for the dogs, but they can pick up the scent again. This is why the handler carries something with your scent on it. If they are distracted from the scent or driven away from the scent, the handler reintroduces the scent and the dogs pick up right where they left off. Myth number three, you can lay booby traps to stop the dogs. Technically, you could, but do you have that kind of time? If you have that much free time, then you don't need to worry about being tracked. Furthermore, a professional tracker handling the dogs will very likely be trained to watch out for traps laid for the dogs in order to keep them safe. Again, this is something that could be technically done, but it just is not practical in most circumstances. Myth number four. You can double back and attack the dog or the handler. In theory, I suppose you could, but keep in mind, it's probably going to be a team of people that will very likely be heavily armed and there's going to be more than one dog. If you think you can double back and attack a dozen men and five dogs by yourself that are probably carrying automatic weapons, good luck. You're going to need it. Now that that subject's out of the way, let's move on to what does work. Number one, if you have the opportunity to travel through a heavily populated area, do so. Moving through a large concentration of people can be very confusing for the dog since they will be overwhelmed with a large variety of similar scents, thereby losing your scent legitimately. Number two, use urine as a distraction. If you have a break in the action, pick three or four spots in different directions from the same point and urinate. This will temporarily confuse the dogs as to which direction they should travel. Number three, since you can't mask your scent, do what you can to contain it. Cover your body as much as possible to prevent skin flakes from coming off. Keep in mind that your clothing also contains your dead skin cells and can still shed, leaving a trail. So whatever you do to cover yourself would involve covering everything, as in wearing a hazmat suit, or perhaps a complete change of clothes may be in order. The dirtier the new clothes, the better, since they will mingle with your scent 
since they will contain someone else's dead skin cells and confuse the scent on the trail. Number four, zigzagging and running over your own tracks will help. It won't throw the dog off, but it will confuse the handler since the dog will follow the scent exactly as it's laid out. If the dog keeps crossing over the exact same points, the handler may be fooled into thinking that the scent has been lost. Number five, know the true weak link with the tracking team. And that link is the endurance of the team. And I mean both the dog and the handler. A dog can overtake someone very quickly in a sprint, but they are not always so good on long distances, particularly if you lead them over rough terrain. Secondly, secondly, the handler may not be able to take too much running around either. So if you are physically fit, you can outlast them on the chase. Basically, have more endurance than they do. Think cardio, people. One point on that, however, is keep in mind that the more you sweat, the more of a scent you will leave on the ground. Remember what I said about water. Same goes for sweat dripping on the ground. So what do you think? If you have any thoughts on the subject or any additional tips you would like to add, please feel free to post them in the comments section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. I hope that you did and it's the easiest way to show your appreciation. Share it if you can and subscribe if you are new and be sure to hit the bell icon so you can be alerted when new content comes out. And do check out some of the other videos if you get the chance. If you would like to help the channel out, there are links for that down below. Every little bit helps and I sure do appreciate it. I can also be found on another channel called Coffee Talk. Check it out if you get the chance. There is a link for that down below as well. So all that being said, as always, Stay frosty, folks, and thanks for watching.